Hello and a warm welcome to this election special where we get you stalwarts who are burning the midnight oil to make battleground Bihar a fight to finish. On the show we have a veteran BJP leader who is a union minister and is also now the poll in charge for Bihar. I welcome Mr. Anand Kumar on for the election special. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kumar, let me begin by asking you that this is for the first time that BJP is contesting so many seats in Bihar. What are the challenges which you really see as far as the micromanagement uh, of, uh, of the party is concerned? The one of the major uh, challenges I see is that spreading of the organizational network in the new areas. We, were, we used to contest 102. Now we are contesting around 160. Therefore, this increase of the area that always makes a new challenge and I think we are on to it because we had uh, our 243 uh, video ruts crisscrossing the entire state of Bihar okay. with uh, more than 48,000 uh, shows mm -hmm. and we also, we are the only party who has 68,000 uh, booth committees. So which means is, are we going to see a repeat of what we saw in 2014 as far as the micromanagement is concerned? BJP is known for micromanagement. BJP plans everything meticulously and uh, we are a grassroots organization and uh, we have in every village and every booth a committee, a village committee and a booth committee with 11 people minimum. Therefore, it is well spread. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anand Kumar, now talking about the real issues which matter to the people in Bihar. What is the real issue? Because people are saying that there are twin planks of caste and development. Both the parties, I mean the Grand Alliance as well, I mean, and the BJP, both are talking about development. We see a kind of a parallel narrative which is, which is running as a political discourse. What according to you is, is the real issue? There is no parallel uh, narrative. Okay. There cannot be a parallel narrative. Because with uh, 15 years of Jangal Raj, coupled with one more year of Jangal Raj, if somebody is saying that there is a parallel narrative, I don't agree with that. Therefore, it is a straight thing before the people. Jangal Raj versus Vikas Raj. Okay. Vikas of Bharati Janta Party and Vinash of Mahagat Bandhan. Therefore, it is straight. But Mr. Anand Kumar, when you say that uh, BJP and India are just talking about Vikas Raj, then why do we see, you know, the, the caste arithmetic also also being played around? Uh, for example, in the in the earlier part of the year, we saw uh, uh, the, the historical icons, you know, like Emperor Ashok and all, uh, they, uh, they were turned into, I mean, the, 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 the entire icon was changed. He was a Kshatriya, then he was made into a Kushwaha. So these historical icons, I mean, I'm just giving you one example. So how you are reaching out to the various castes, 100 and caste, 110 about castes are there, which constitute the EBC. There are various caste meetings which, which are being held by BJP. So if you're only talking about Vikas Raj, then what is the need for all this? What is politics? Okay. Politics is nothing but the reflection of the society. Mm -hmm. Reflection of the society as it is. Okay. It is both the present situation as well as the aspirational. Okay. Therefore, when I speak of aspirational, it is Vikas. Okay. And uh, when I look at the present situation, I need to go with this arithmetic. Okay. And this, so represent, which means, which this means, represents the entire society of Bihar. So which means that development in Bihar is not possible without talking about caste. Forget the caste. You don't look through the lens of caste. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi says, Sabka Vikas Sabke Saath. Yane, when I say Sabke Saath, that means I will take the entire society as it is into account. Therefore, Atalji always used to say Vikas, Teji Se Vikas, Santulit Vikas, Sabke Liye Vikas. That Sabke Liye Vikas means everybody. Uh, it's, it's definitely a novel narrative when you, when you come to states like UP and Bihar. But... Uh, what mesmerizes everyone is that BJP was in alliance with JDU for about eight years and then the party split. So when, you ha when the party is to attack Nitish Kumar on the development plan, how would you, I mean, how would you really do that? I mean, would it not just boil down to a battle of egos like for the last two years when he split? How would you look at the years 
when you were in alliance in whatever departments we worked okay the bjp ministers were there for example sushil kumar modi ji used to be the deputy chief minister looking after finance right. nand kishore yadav ji used to be the minister for public works development looking mm -hmm. after roads right. and uh, ashwini chobe ji used to look after the health ministry right. in all that areas we initiated a development activity but when he parted ways mm -hmm. he ditched us he betrayed us he betrayed the mandate of the people mm -hmm. then again it became jangal raj 2 Lalu Prasad Yadav ji and Rabri Devi Jangal Raj 1 and uh, Nitish Kumar with Lalu Prasad Yadav became Jangal Raj 2 therefore people don't want the reputation of Jangal Raj 3 but uh, when 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 all this talk about the caste erupts uh, generally you know the grand alliance is trying to corner BJP on uh, the recent Mohan Bhagwat's uh, comment on reservation uh, how would you really look at it because they they have just got one point on which to corner BJP at the moment Uh, even rashtriya even rashtriya swayamsevak sangh has clarified okay and it is the firm belief commitment resolution of bharatiya janata party okay. that we are for the reservations as it is today no dilution at all and when we say the reservation as is various basis according to the constitution of india for scheduled caste scheduled tribes obcs and dbcs right. i think there rests the ma matter both lalu prasad ji and nitish kumar ji they don't have anything else to say they can't talk about their own developmental agenda they don't have a de developmental track record they are having the heavy baggage of kushasan therefore they are they are raising a bogey and people are going to see through it and people are really fed up about this rhetoric last 25 years they are fed up of the rhetoric they want to go for a change they want to go for development reform good governance but uh, anand kumar ji youth is, is is a very big game changer in bihar elections after up bihar is one of the the, the, the second state almost which has the largest number of youths how are you really reaching out to the youths this election will be an aspirational election okay that is because of the technology also okay there is the persona persona of uh, narendra bhai modi right as a person as a icon of uh, development and reform mm -hmm. and good good governance and there is a performance of gujarat and last 15 months as prime minister of india the central rule and uh, coupled with these things it is the platform of the technology okay. which was not there in 90s 95 2000 right. which is there in 2015 mm -hmm. that means the bihar is no more isolated is not an island right. and whatever ha happens in uh, madhya pradesh happens in gujarat happens in chatisgarh happens in uh, the most southern states right. all those developments and activities right. will filter into the psyche of the people of uh, bihar more so the younger generation but how how are you really reaching out to the yadav youths you know the social media generation which which is already the core voter base of the grand alliance for example the muslims the yadavs uh, uh, the obcs who have a consolidated vote already for rjd and uh, uh, and jdu so how are you really reaching out what is the strategy really to reach out to them because they, they they say that yadav votes is really consolidated uh, you know in favor of uh, youth is garden fresh okay when youth is garden fresh there are no caste lines drawn so if you can if mean away have, the youth if they have one entity one uh, identification right. that they are biharis okay that's all okay. therefore that big entity big identification that they are biharis they are patriotic indians they are new gen indians new gen biharis right. therefore i don't think that uh, through the technological platform you can reach out to no, them no no whatever is reaching them is not reaching them through the funnel of casteism mm -hmm. it is the same filter filter of aspiration
Okay. But uh, you know, as far as uh, the advertising, uh, the entire campaign, the high decibel campaign which has been launched, uh, one really has to see the way the Grand Alliance has matched up its uh, rhetoric and the advertising, the poster wars which we see the, around the whole city and the entire Bihar. And your own associates who had handled uh, BJP's uh, advertising campaign have been associated with Nitish Ji's campaign. So how would you really say? Because people have already called uh, the campaign war really uh, of, of, of the Grand Alliance which has matched up well with BJP. Ultimately, any election is an election of war of credibility, okay. war of perception. Mm -hmm. What happened in Bangalore South? You had that uh, Infosys Hanko, Nanda Nilekani, pitted against me and Bharti Janta Party. Do you require uh, uh, more taller uh, icon and uh, more high decibel uh, social media and uh, communication bridge? You don't require. But at the same time, people rejected him and people elected Narendra Modi, Anand Kumar and Bharti Janta Party. Therefore, same thing is going to happen here. It's a war of images. Right. The so image, image of Mahagatpandan is tainted and tarnished. But in every image rally, of Bharati Janta Party is of hope and assurance. But in every rally which Nitish Kumar and Laluji are conducting, they are going out and telling the people how over the last one year BJP's image has got a dent. How, uh, of course, I mean, when, when Narendra Modi starts speaking in the rallies, maybe the picture would be a little different. But all this while, what we have seen, like yesterday also, I was listening to one of the Nitish Ji's rally, and he said that uh, why do they need only Prime Minister Narendra Modi? There will be a time when Narendra Modi Ji will be required even for a Gram Panchayat uh, election. So how would you really respond to this kind of a rhetoric which, which Lalu and Nitish How many are? programs they are doing themselves? Mm -hmm. It is only Nitish Kumar and Lalu Prasad Yadav with no second person campaigning for their parties. That is the pitiable situation of their parties. The entire uh, Nitish Kumar's JDU is deserted and uh, the Lalu Prasad Yadav's party has fallen into a family fiefdom. Whereas Bharti Janta Party has a galaxy of leadership led by Narendra Bhai Modi, then Amit Bhai, Rajna Singh Ji, Sushma Swaraj Ji, Nitin Gadkari Ji and all our uh, central uh, uh, leaders as well as the state leaders from Sushil Kumar Modi, Nand Kishore Yadav to Giriraj Singh to Ashwini Chaube and what not. And for everybody's uh, public meetings, there are huge crowds. Why Nitish Kumar is so blind to this? But Mr. Anand Kumar, uh, what I don't understand is that why is BJP shying from announcing its chief ministerial candidate? Is it, is it a well-calibrated strategy or you're waiting for an opportune moment to do it? Uh, that is you what is it. In your question only, you gave the answer. It's a well-calibrated strategy. Okay. In Maharashtra, we did not do it. In uh, Jharkhand, we did not do it. In Haryana, we did not do it. In Jammu and Kashmir, we did not do it. And therefore, it is the call of the party because this as is a one matter point. of strategy. Right. But this is one point on which Grand Alliance is claiming that they have an upper, they have a, a upper advantage. Shall because I tell you one thing? The people, of, the people of Bihar are very mature. They know the Bharati Janata Party is in the safe hands of uh, Narendra Bhai Modi as well as uh, Amit Bhai Shah. And they also know that Bharati Janata Party and NDA is going to cross the bridge when it approaches the bridge. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Anand Kumarji, do you really not think that, you know, uh, we, we are talking about uh, the, uh, the, the, the opposite alliances, how they are made. They are not synergistic at all. If we talk about the non-synergistic alliances in Grand Alliance, then there are non-synergistic alliances also in NDA. Like you've, you've come together with uh, Paswan, you've come together with uh, people like Pedro Kushwaha. And uh, do you think that it's really going to last or is it really a big challenge? Because it's a battle of egos at the end of the day. If at all coalitions became successful, it became successful only with the leadership of Bharati Janata Party. For example, Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji provided a six-year coalition with coalition dharma with 24 parties together. And wherever we were in coalition, earlier in uh, Bihar, now in uh, Maharashtra as well as in Punjab, they are long-lasting long lasting to the extent of 20, 25 years. Therefore, we are tried, tested and trusted.
but uh, the the 12% population of the muslims that is also a very big factor how bjp is going to reach out for example in eastern bihar in areas like kishanganj purnia these these are the areas simanchal area where mim uh, leader uvc is you know making uh, high decibel pitch you know, to reach out to the muslim voters in this kind of a scenario how is bjp reaching out to the muslims in simanchal i think there is a new awareness okay when you say new awareness it's it's regarding what no new awareness about the uh, governance new awareness about the development new awareness about the reforms new awareness about good quality of life because ultimately we require bijli sadak pani with that good education as well as health services with all these things we also require entrepreneurship and employment and who can provide this when madhya pradesh which was a which was a bimaru state has become a sucharu state rajasthan a bimaru state has become a sucharu state why bihar is still bimaru why it can't march forward mm -hmm. therefore this aspirational uh, uh, factor is there all across the communities and castes Mr. Mr. Kumar, even our muslim brother and friends they feel bjp is the party for good governance bjp is the party of the future right but you know when 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 incidents like when this uh, caste census was released where you talked about the religious identity of the population that muslims were on the rise and hindu population was on the decline then you have episodes like beef lynching you know happening in elsewhere uh, which do you think that it does have an impact for example people like ovsi where they went to dadri yesterday and they make statements don't you think that it will have a polarizing effect in states like bihar and especially when i talk about simanchal region where the muslim population is so dominant is it not going to impact the election because Polar it, it does it does polarize polarizing is a lens okay therefore don't use that lens that is a opaque lens why don't you but think what happens when people like ovc use it why don't you think of uh, consolidation don't you see that in last uh, lok sabha election in 2014 right. there was a huge consolidation right. in favor of narendra modi but, but in favor of good governance in favor of development absolutely, and reform absolutely but but absolutely but mr kumar you also had an event like uh, i would not call it an event i correct my, my myself there was a muzaffarnagar riot which which really polarized and then ended up in consolidation of hindu votes ended up in consolidation of muslim votes so likewise would it why, not happen the same way we are why are we talking about sporadic in incidents here and there why are we not talking about and analyzing the wave from kanyakumari to kashmir to kach to kohima mm -hmm. if you are going to get 282 seats in the outgoing lok sabha you are less than 140 and in the incoming lok sabha bharatiya janata party on its own got magic figure of 282 but sir last year nda we crossed 300 ma the bar therefore why are you not seeing the big picture of the pan india right but sir last year only during lok sabha elections out of 40 seats uh, bjp won about 31 seats but you could not your party couldn't open an account in the muslim uh, the muslim dominant areas shahnawaz ji lost out from bhagalpur so is this not a sticky point on which bjp really has to work now no no we won in uh, simanchal also and uh, bagalpur per se is not attributed to any community okay. it's a general seat like any other seat mm -hmm. and therefore i am requesting you with bihar okay. when are you when you are talking about the polarization think of the entire india okay. therefore i want to use a new term the term of consolidation of the people of india mm -hmm. people of bihar for good governance under the leadership of narendra bhai modi you talking about a new uh, terminology sir what i wanted to know from you a uh, vision document now is a new nomenclature for manifesto is this a new strategy or a kind of a new uh, nomenclature or new face which the bjp wants to give as far as uh, the manifesto is concerned why do you call it a vision Mani document and not manifesto manifesto is a statement of what we are going to do and it has to be time bound both are time bound vision document is beyond a period that means we want to visualize the entire state of bihar and the life of the quality of the life of the people of bihar over a period of years because of good governance in this manner therefore that is a vision document therefore uh, i think uh, 
manifesto is a futuristic statement whereas vision document is a continuing vision okay and uh, so I, another point which at the last leg of my interview I would like to ask you uh, the special economic package which was uh, announced by narendra modi ji that has been contested by people like nitish kumar and by rjd saying that you know it was it has been just repackaged there were a lot of schemes which are which were existing uh, what is the reality basically the reality is only this much that if we say it is repackaging mm -hmm. and academically we agree what he was doing to implement that uh, repackaged uh, situation in last 10 years of uh, upa governance at delhi what their invisible partners of bihar were doing mm -hmm. we have given a fresh package okay. we have given a comprehensive package this package is of the size of 125000 crores mm -hmm. covering all the uh, factors and uh, sectors of bihar's life and i think this is a great hope great assurance to the development of bihar and this uh, package would also cover things like rural distress because like in maharashtra you also had uh, a bad monsoon here farmers uh, one or two farmers even committed suicide for the first time we heard that bihar farmers are committing suicide would that package also cover uh, this package has 23000 crore rupees for agriculture rural development and rural welfare farmers welfare which includes uh, rural roads of uh, 22500 uh, kilometers which also includes the feeder separation for uh, domestic power 24 by 7 and uh, power for irrigation 24 by 7 in rural areas mm -hmm. as the feeder separation has been done in madhya pradesh and gujarat this also provides for the balanced use of fertilization good seeds remunerative prices and all everything therefore it is a great boost for the rural development as well as the farmers welfare people are saying that key to bjp's victory is that 32% ebc vote if it went swing in favor of bjp bjp gets the bihar throne do you have a particular strategy in mind to reach out to the ebcs particularly the key to bjp's victory is the mind of the people of bihar that this time they are going to have a parivartan change all across pan bihar they want change they want to throw this kushasan this jangal raj out and they want to bring sushasan and bharti janta party and nda so that is the key and of course but with that i also want to tell you that all sections of bihar society including ebcs are part of this movement therefore uh, it is not, not it, no no it is not a fragmented movement it is a movement of bihar as a whole so as narendra modi says probably bihar will be celebrating two diwalis this year bihar will be celebrating definitely two diwalis and bihar will be lighting a new diwali of hope for india also wish you all the best mr anand kumar thanks for coming on rajya sabha tv thank you so much